In a series of videos, I discuss the different districts of Manhattan, and in this video, we are going to discuss Midtown Manhattan. Welcome to my channel, Urban Caffeine. Whether you live in NYC or visiting, chances are you will find yourself in the clutches of Midtown Manhattan. It makes sense. It has central hubs for local city and out-of-state transportation. It has live entertainment from Broadway to comedy clubs, dining from Michelin restaurants to hole-in-the-wall places, classical architecture, contemporary art, etc. Midtown Manhattan is massive, it's dense, and it's smack right there in the middle of the city. And we have a lot to cover. So we are going to cover this at a 10,000 foot view in rapid fire. This is not a video that you watch in 2x speed. Feel free to pause, rewind, and know that each area that we are going to cover is a potential future video in and of itself. So sit back, relax, and let's get through this. As a preamble, the boundaries of these neighborhoods that we are going to cover is not official. Sources differ because, like most cities, New York is constantly changing. It's hard to put a hard line where one culture climate ends and another one begins. But we are going to try our best. Midtown is just below Central Park. South and North are bounded by 14th and 59th Street. Streets increase in number from South to North. To help understand the breakdown of the districts, streets that we need to note are 23rd, 34th, and 42nd. Each street has a notable landmark. 14th has Union Square Park. 23rd has Madison Square Park. Don't confuse Madison Square Park with Madison Square Garden. Although the original Madison Square Garden was in the vicinity of Madison Square Park. 34th has Herald Square, 42nd has Bryant Park, and 59th has Columbus Circle. Above 59th starts Central Park. The famous Broadway that runs the entire length of Manhattan runs from Union Square and touches all these landmarks except for Bryant Park. The highway in the far east is the FDR Drive. Then you have Sutton Place, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Avenues, Lexington Park and Madison, and 5th to 12th Avenue. So let's get into the actual neighborhoods that people reference starting with the area between 42nd and 59th. Turtle Bay is named after a cove where the UN building now stands. Surrounding the UN building are multiple mansions of different nations and charitable foundations. Also in Turtle Bay is the Chrysler Building, which combines the ideas of mechanical beauty and jazz. And for the art and architectural enthusiasts, this is an example of the Art Deco style. And in the upper corner of Turtle Bay is Sutton Place. It's a residential and historical neighborhood. There's a nice view of the East River and Roosevelt Island. The Rockefeller Center doesn't need much of an introduction. It's featured in many movies and on national television during the holidays. Most locals like to point out that it's better to go up the top of the rock building rather than the Empire State because you can see the Empire State from the top of the rock. A block south of the Rockefeller Center is the Diamond District. In the 1920s and 30s, the diamond dealers were in downtown Manhattan. But refugees from Amsterdam and Antwerp that were fleeing Hitler settled here and they were later joined by diamond dealers from downtown. It is said that 90% of diamonds that go into the United States go through New York and majority of them go through the diamond district. 46th Street, another block south, is Little Brazil, a place to find Brazilian restaurants. Times Square is often mentioned together with Broadway because they are both in the same area. The theater district has 40 of the 41 Broadway theaters in New York, with the 41st being in the Lincoln Center in the Upper West Side. A Broadway theater has 500 seats, and an off-Broadway theater has between 100 to 499 seats and doesn't necessarily have to be in the Broadway district. And an off-off-Broadway has less than 100 seats and is located all throughout New York City. Hell's Kitchen is also known as Clinton. In the mid-1800s, it was all slaughterhouses, gas plants, and soap and glue factories. A lot of gangs raided the railroad, so it became notorious for being one of the most dangerous places in the American continent. It mellowed out a little in the 1910s when the railroad owners hired their own muscles. <laughs> But in the 1920s, the bootleggers came in and violence 
came along with them. Then it was drugs in the 1970s and by the 1980s, the gentrification started to happen. Today, now it has a lot of upscale condominiums and it has a completely different landscape. Hell's Kitchen is the reigning queen of NYC's queer nightlife. So if you're looking for a colorful night out, I would say head to Hell's Kitchen. Say you needed some zippers. You can find an entire store full of zippers. Or say you needed some leotards or leotard material. You can find an entire store of leotards or leotard material, all in the garment district. In a previous video, I talked about how department stores migrated into Midtown from downtown very early in the 1900s. A lot of them were here on 6th Avenue. So the entire industry of designers, cutters, seamstresses, button makers, the entire peanut gang followed these department stores and created what we now call the garment district. And they were all geographically zoned as well. There was an area for fur, there was an area for children's clothes, there was an area for women's clothes. You get the picture. And this stretch of 7th Avenue is also known as Fashion Avenue. And at one point, the source of 90% of the clothing in the United States came from the garment district. In Murray Hill, you will find the Morgan Library, the personal library of J.P. Morgan. As his librarian once put it, the library contains everything but the original tablet of the Ten Commandments. I came here once when the Gutenberg Bible was on display, and if you're a bibliophile, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of Murray Hill is residential with small businesses and chic or casual dining. And in the mid-1800s, people like the Tiffany's, Belmont's, Delano's, the Morgan's built mansions in this area or around it. And so from the very beginning, real estate prices were already hiked up. Hooter City is a historic district and was originally an apartment complex. It's worth noting because it's one of the first and largest examples of middle-class residential communities in New York City. Kipps Bay actually used to be a bay, and there was a farm right next to it, which was settled by a person named Jacobus Hendrickson Kipp, and thus the name Kipps Bay. Now it's reclaimed land, but the name of the area stuck. Kipps Bay is similar to Murray Hill, with a mix of residential and small businesses, except that there are three large hospital institutions to the east. Koreatown is also known as K-Town. If you're craving Korean barbecue, a karaoke room to yourself, or just Korean culture from bookstores to bakeries to spas, you can find it all in K-Town. Nomad is short for north of Madison Square Park. At one point, it was a military parade ground, and today it's the starting point of the annual Veterans Day Parade. Overlapping Nomad is Rose Hill, where you can find Little India. Along this area of Lexington has a cluster of Indian restaurants and spice shops. The plot of land where the famous Flatiron building stands was actually already called Flatiron even before the building was built. In Madison Square Park is the very first Shake Shack. Shake Shack to New York is what In-N-Out is to the West Coast. The New York Life Insurance Tower was at one point the location of the original Madison Square Garden. The current Madison Square Garden is located between 31st and 33rd Street in the district of Chelsea. Chelsea is well known for contemporary art. In this portion of it, you will find many galleries. If you got a couple hundred thousand dollars to spare for art, then I recommend going to the Chelsea galleries and buying art there. If not, and you only have a few bucks for coffee and maybe brunch, then you can make gallery hopping a Sunday activity. The main difference between a gallery and a museum is that you can typically buy art at a gallery. And 99% of the time, entrance to a gallery is free because they make their money off of selling art. In Chelsea, you can also see the High Line, which was an old elevated rail that was converted into a city park. Next to it is the Chelsea Market. There is also the Flower District. Here you can take flower arrangement classes or shop around for fresh or silk flowers. Overlapping Hell's Kitchen and Chelsea is Hudson Yards. This used to be the center of the city's freight distribution system. Today, you'll find the newly built vessel alongside newer development and the Javits Center used for trade shows, conventions, and other large events. And the last leg of our Midtown journey is between 14th and 23rd. 
starting with the Peter Cooper Village in Stuyvesant Town. This is a residential development of 80 acres of land with about 11,250 apartments with some pretty sweet amenities. There was a lot of controversy around this development. Suffice to say, it revolved around a partnership between a public and private entity. Gramercy is centered around Gramercy Park, which is one of the two private parks in the city. Only people who live around it and pay an annual fee have keys to the park. To me, Gramercy is a good mix between Midtown Manhattan and Downtown Manhattan because it's chic and posh, but you feel the bohemian vibe coming from East Village, which is right south of it. And finally, we have Union Square. Historically, Union Square was a hotspot because it's where the two major roads of Broadway and Bowery, now 4th Avenue, meet. Union Square has so much history. At one point, it was the location of a lot of rich houses, and then it was a center for political activism, and then it became an open-air drug market. And today, it's home to NYC's most famous farmer's market that's open year-round. So that's a wrap for Midtown Manhattan. In closing, Midtown is massive. It's got electrifying, upbeat entertainment to the north of it. It's got chic out atmosphere to the south of it, mainly because it's right north of Greenwich and East Village, which is very trendy and avant-garde. There's so much to see in Midtown Manhattan, and I hope this video has given you a good overview of the general landscape and a decent grasp so that you yourself could have an easier time exploring it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you know someone who is traveling to New York or is moving to New York, please consider sharing this with them. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe and check out my channel. Till next time, thank you so much for watching.